Hacksters! Today we're digging into the Microchip AVR-IoT Cellular Mini Development Kit. This Arduino-compatible board comes ready to rock, with some headers, an antenna, and a true phone sim with 150 megabytes of data right out of the box. It's designed for industrial and environmental data collection and monitoring, in places where Wi-Fi is scarce but you need some sensor feedback. You could use these to watch the HVAC system atop your building, or catch anomalous vibrations or heat issues in a factory, without worrying about spotty Wi-Fi or messing around with a laptop in the field. Just set them up in your lab, drop them into place, and wait a few moments for the LEDs to indicate a connection to an LTEM-capable cellular network. Now let's take a close-up look. For connectivity, we've got that nano SIM card holder, plus an eSIM footprint to expand your options. These complement the cellular module, supported by an Arduino library with lots of examples that we'll dig into in a moment. And it's already loaded with example firmware that enables you to quickly connect and send data to the microchip sandbox in AWS from these built-in temperature and color sensors, as we'll see in a moment. For a physical user interface, you've got five LEDs, some of which also serve as state indicators, as well as two mechanical buttons. Plus, an Adafruit Feather compatible footprint and a quick I2C connector give you room to grow. You can use external power via the pins, the USB-C connector, or a lithium-ion or lithium-polymer battery, thanks to the built-in charging circuit, which includes a charge status LED. For debugging, the board is ready to connect with Microchip Studio and Microchip MPLAB X, featuring two logic analyzer channels and a virtual serial port with LED feedback. The creators have also built in a secure element, the ECC-608B cryptographic IC, which provides security protocols and secure storage of private keys. There's a nice block diagram in the Arduino docs at the URL shown below. All right, let's plug this guy in. Right off the bat, we have a nice little LED rainbow flash, which generally happens when the board resets. We'll be following this tutorial at the link shown. You can find all these links in the description below. Scan the QR code on the bottom of the board, or open the clickme.html file stored on the board, which shows up as a flash storage device. As we move forward, this onboarding process works best with Chrome. First up, we've got to connect that SIM, so unplug your board again, break the smallest piece out of its card, and insert it, ideally without touching the contacts. Keep the rest of that card, though. You'll need it later. Pull out your antenna, remove the rubber cap, and gently click it into place. Next up, we activate the SIM. Search for your country to check coverage, then go back and open the activation link. You'll probably need to create a new account, so enter your information, and then enter the confirmation code from the email you receive. Since we're just using one device, I'll make a personal account and add my SIM individually via the ICC ID, the top number here on the card. After that, I'm prompted to enter the PUK from the bottom left. Hit the button, and I can click this arrow to see where service is available. Just a couple more clicks, and we're activated. My card activated almost immediately, but if yours needs a minute, you can take a tour of the TruePhone user interface. Here you can manage your SIM cards and even retire them for security reasons. My board is now showing up as a flash drive. I download the latest hex file and drop it onto the drive. It finishes quickly, and the blue LED begins to blink, indicating that it's looking for a connection. Eventually, it goes solid blue, and the green one turns on too once a connection is made to the microchip sandbox. The yellow LED illuminates when it sends a heartbeat signal with data to the sandbox, which happens once a minute, or when I press button SW0. Using the sandbox interface, I can toggle the user LEDs on and off and send up data at my chosen rate. Since it's set to send every thousand milliseconds, the data LED blinks once per second. Here I can see that when I bring more light in, the sensor picks it up, and when I cover it with my hand, it gets darker and warmer. The interface defaults to sending data for one minute, so if yours stops updating, try setting a longer duration and clicking the Start Sensor Data Streaming button again. You can also look at verbose data logs from the sensors, or clear them. Finally, we're redirected to the Arduino programming docs to get started with building our own application. If I go back to the TruePhone interface, I can see how much data I've used and when, plus my inventory of activated and inactive SIMs. This whole process went smoothly for me, but if you do run into any issues, check the troubleshooting section for more info. Time to check out the Arduino side. First, make sure your IDE is up to date. After reading through the intro, check out the next page where we'll set up our development environment the rest of the way. Let's install the dependencies first. The AVR IoT cellular library relies on the open source DX core, which we have to set up first by grabbing the boards manager URL from here and adding it in preferences. 
It takes a little while to load and then we choose it from the list and hit install. You may need to resize the boards manager pane to get the install button to show up. Next we'll choose a few important settings as shown and then use the library manager to grab the library along with its dependencies if you don't already have them installed. This may look a little different in the new Arduino 2 interface, but it's the same idea and uses the same settings as noted below in the tutorial. Once the library is installed, its examples become available under the file menu. I like the look of this GPIO demo, which tests out a button and LED, plus an analog voltage measurement from the temperature sensor. It's really extensively commented and worked well when I tried it. This is the kind of concrete hardware example I love to see for people who want to build their own designs around a new board. You may choose to set up the MPLAB data visualizer now to stream data to your computer, but for now we'll just do a quick demo in the browser. On the next page we have another interactive environment where we get to see the logs streaming in from the AVR-IoT cellular mini dev board. Hit connect board to fire it up and it starts reading automatically showing us a periodic MQTT heartbeat. On the next page, we have an example that sends an HTTP GET request to pull the current time from worldtimeapi.org. You can compile the Arduino code and download a hex file straight from your browser, and you'll get a little rainbow burst of LED action as it resets. I decided to try it in the Arduino IDE, and it works well, although you have to launch the serial monitor quickly to see it do its thing. So I combined it with the earlier GPIO example so that it retrieves the data every time you push the button marked SW0. No problems, and it works well. Of course, I'm not the only one building with this board. Microchip's Wizard of Make, aka Bob Martin, has been building a sensor cube project that pushes different types of sensor data up to the cloud using HiveMQ as an MQTT data broker. Check out his ongoing MakerZone series, linked below, where you can learn about Microchip's work with new features in AVR boards, plus the onboard programmer that means you don't have to disconnect the serial port to program the board. You can keep that connection while you're iterating on your app, which is pretty cool. Many thanks to our friends at Microchip for sending this over. It's a very smart little board, well-documented with solid examples. Share your ideas in the comments, and as always, hack on!